G'day everyone, Viv here again from Battle Bunker down here in Melbourne. Just a little bit of housekeeping before I get back into the regular stuff that I left off of two months ago. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> building a church, scenery, there's lots of building been going on, Wild West stuff, um, some textured tables and display boards, a couple of commission projects in the go at the moment, I'll talk about all of that later on. Right now, housekeeping. I got a lot of messages um, over the last two months from people, uh, some of which I responded to, some of which I didn't respond to. Um, if you did send me a message and asked me a question and I didn't respond to you, please send me the message again um, and, and, and I'll get on to it. Three things I just want to quickly cover in this very short video. First thing from um, a YouTube user called Monte Carlo 712 I exchanged a couple of messages with him when he sent me this message. Um, he's, he also, he's also on MeWarGaming.com under the username Pastor Boiler. Um, you can also find me there. I haven't uploaded anything there for a while, but same name, rubbish in, rubbish out. He's been working on a hot wire cutter and has set up a fantastic website, and I really recommend that you go and check it out. If you're interested in doing any sort of foam work, uh, hot wire cutters are definitely what you need. And he's put together an excellent, excellent website, and I told him that I'd tell everybody about it, so here I am telling everybody about it. Um, I'll put the link here in the description, uh, hotwirefoamcutterinfo.com. Um, you can jump on there. He's got a bunch of stuff on there. Um, electrical diagrams, understanding circuitry, um, PDF images, tutorials. He's got videos here on YouTube as well. You may have seen some of them. I'm not sure. Uh, go check him out. He's, he, he says here, seriously, check it out. You might be pleasantly surprised. And I, I, I actually was pleasantly surprised. I know all about hot wire foam cutters, etc. and have built several in the past. Um, but this website was fantastic. Everything you need in one place. It really, really makes it very, very easy. So, um, Doc, thanks for that one, mate. Um, really good. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hotwirephonecutterinfo.com. Second one about Hearst Arts Moulds from Harkin. Um, he mentioned here after I did the, the series on using our Hearst Arts Moulds, what are their playability like? Um, are Hearst Moulds good for actual war game playing? Um, as in, is it, is it good, like it won't chip or anything, etc, etc. Now, unfortunately, anything that you're going to cast out of plaster or any gypsum material, whether it's plaster of Paris or Merlin's Magic, like Bill uses from Drainaholic or um, Hydrocal or Hydrostone or anything like that, it's, it is going to chip. Um, it's, it's, it's unavoidable. Um, it's, that's, just, just, that's just normal everyday life um, with, with plaster casts. There is one, or there is a couple things you can do to help reduce the uh, obviousness of chips, um, and that's to dye the plaster uh, as, as, you, as you're preparing it. You can uh, dye it either with paint, or there are special dyes and inks that you can get to uh, dye your casting medium so that when you pour your blocks out or when you pop your blocks out, they'll be that color green, red, blue, black, whatever. Um, and so when uh, your object chips, it's not going to be immediately noticeable because uh, uh, you've got this great big white blob standing out or white chip standing out, and that, that, that's going to be brown or black or etc. etc. So it's not going to be obvious. So in response to your question, uh, should I use foam core or should I, uh, I go ahead with the moulds? I'd like to. I I like to do a blend of both. Uh, pure Hurst builds can get very very heavy. Um, but they, they're excellent for giving you detail and uh, that little bit of extra ooh uh, for the table. So I'd go foam core and uh, embellish it with the Hearst Arts Moulds. Uh, just be aware that if you are going to drop stuff, uh, if stuff does get dropped, it's probably going to chip. Um, and the third one from Liam, uh, Spazmaster 1996, sorry. Um, he asked about, this was a while back, he asked about undercoating miniatures and painting them on the sprue and then assembling them afterwards. He asked me what my opinion was. I told him that I shoot a, little, uh, a quick video about it. Now, that, that was about three months ago. I'm very, very sorry it's taken such a long time to answer this question, but um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a full assembly person. I, I cut off the sprue, I cut everything off the sprue, I clean it up, I assemble everything, um, and then I undercoat and paint. Um, there are some examples. Uh, is there one hanging around here, for example? Here's one. There are some examples, for example, this Empire guy. He doesn't, I haven't glued his uh, gun on the front there because it would make it difficult to get in there. Same thing with the Space Marine bolters, etc. I don't glue those on. Uh, but otherwise, I fully assemble the miniature. My reasons? A, 
I don't like to paint on the sprue because you've got this this huge big thing that you've got to flip around. I understand that this isn't sprue, but um, you've got to turn this whole thing around. It's difficult, etc. Second reason, once you've painted everything on the sprue, you've then got to clip everything out. And in my experience, I'm not very good at doing that neatly, especially if I had everything painted on there and then I'm trying to clip everything out. Once I've clipped everything out, I've got to glue it together. So I'm either going to be gluing paint to paint which isn't a very good combination. It's not going to make the miniatures very durable. Um, or I'm going to have to go back and retouch and, problem and repaint things anyway. So I don't know, maybe that's one for you guys. How do you paint? Do you paint on the sprue? Um, do you find that there's problems afterwards gluing things together? Like cavalry, for example. Cavalry. I'm doing work on my empire army right now. So the, the horse, I've painted the undercoat. And the rider, he hasn't been undercoated yet. I've got to do him shortly. <coughs> Excuse me. But as soon as they're both undercoated, I should have glued him on the horse before I undercoated him. He's going to get glued on there and then painted. And I'm probably going to have to file back this little bit of black paint on his saddle. Uh, it's not a huge drama. I mean, you can, you can do it. But um, my preference, I, I, I assemble, fully, completely assemble everything, and then I paint it. Um, You might do it differently. They're my reasons. A, I have to go back and retouch up things anyway. I don't like gluing paint to paint because it doesn't stay for very long. Um, and, and just cleaning the models on the sprue is a pain. So, um, Spaz Master 1996, that one was for you, mate. I uh, fully assemble and then I paint. So, they're the three things that I wanted to go through today. A little bit of housekeeping. Um, there's lots of things going on right now. Uh, every Sunday down here at Battle Bunker in Fitzroy, we're running uh, Pop City demo games. Uh, we'll have some going on later today. That's between 4 and 8 today being Sunday. For some of you, perhaps, who are living in the past, it might be still Saturday. Um, <laughs> every Sunday, we run Pop City events. Uh, Legends of the Old West, I'll be talking about that shortly. That's a cool, another cool little skirmish game published by Warhammer Historical. Uses uh, Lord of the Rings style rules. Uh, with a campaign progression system similar to Mordheim. So for those people who are already familiar with uh, Lord of the Rings or pretty much any Games Workshop game, uh, this one's going to be very similar. It is published by Warhammer Historical, they're a division of Games Workshop uh, um, Incorporated. But um, it's a cool fun game. I'll get into that later on. More Pop City stuff coming up. The church is on the go. Tetchered tables, lots of cool stuff going on. Club events, we've got a Warhammer Fantasy Tournament in November. Anyway, for what was supposed to be a very quick video, this is now over seven minutes. Thanks very much, guys. Have a great day, and I shall catch you next time. See ya.